Wait, it's all Mario? Oh, you see what else did. <clears throat> okay. Alright, guys, we're doing another Mario video. I thought you guys would be tired by now, but apparently not. I mean, I've done so many different videos on this game, but I love it, so I could talk about it for hours. I mean, I'm not really complaining here. It turns out, despite about how many games that Nintendo made, including this game, if this game inevitably launches for Switch, I think the safest bet in terms of new content would be a brand new character. It seems like they're putting all their games for the Wii. New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe got Toadette, Petra, and all that fun stuff. Obviously, we got a new funky mode with Donkey Kong and Paper Mario. The Origami King has been released a couple days ago. So I'm going to take you all back to like third grade, and we're going to whip out the pie chart, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know why I have... I give the percentage I give each of the characters. I'm going to be going in order from most likely to least likely, so let's just jump into the first character. The most likely character I think would be added to Super Mario Wii Deluxe for the Nintendo Switch is Yoshi. I give Yoshi a 50% chance. Uh, it seems like Nintendo ad adds easy modes to their games when they port them to Switch, and Yoshi would be the perfect easy mode. Not only is his flutter jump a new ability so he would be distinct from the other characters, but it would make so much players so much easier just giving you kind of a combo between Toadette's hover, hover and a bit of a double jump. On top of that, Yoshi was not a playable character at all in the original game, so it would be good for variety. I, the double jump... The flutter jump is what he needs to be for the easy mode. I wouldn't be surprised if this wasn't the case. So after taking 50% of this point out, we're going to move on to the second most option, and that is no character. I think there's a 20% chance or one-fifth that we just don't get a new character at all. I gave this a second most chance just because I honestly do think Gyoshi is so likely that if we don't get him, we may not get anyone. As much as I hate to say this, Nintendo doesn't need to add in a new character. There are already six options, including one unlockable one, and Toda and Navit already function as easy modes. I mean, Navit doesn't take damage from enemies, and Toda can just hover, which is, I mean, if you're trying to go fast, obviously, you're kind of bad, but they're just so, so much better than literally any other option. They essentially already are the game's easy mode, so if they want to add, them, add in like a Funky Kong type character who's just blatantly overpowered, because that's kind of already feature. Okay, moving back on to the actual characters, I give Daisy 10%. A lot of people seem to think Daisy is shooing. I just don't get that. I think a lot of people want Daisy to be ambitious. For some reason, the internet loves Daisy. I'm not going to speak ill of the character because I don't want to start World War III in the comments, but I'm just going to say, I mean, the, for one the fine feature in Daisy is the double jump and that was only because of Super Mario Run but it would be very similar to Rosalina's spin jump. I think Daisy's the second most character besides Yoshi but I only give her a 10% chance to actually make it in. Moving on down to the far person characters, I have a couple of these. First one I want to talk first I want to talk about Sprixie. Sprixies don't have any power to call their own. The only reason I included them is because they were in Super Mario 3D World and I think they've only been playable in Mario Tennis Ultra Smash. Doesn't make sense, but I give them a 5% chance. Another 5% character is Pauline. Now Pauline was recently heavily featured in Super Mario Odyssey, which is obviously the last 3D Mario game. She was then brought into Mario Tennis Aces where people can actually or player. She can throw her giant hat of several of a boomerang providing the most ranged attack. Gameplay wise it would be it would be awesome. We don't have a character that has a built in ranged attack so it would be good for variety. On top of that it would promote Odyssey which is actually on the console and it would be really cool. Unfortunately I only give her a five percent because th these are just too cool for Nintendo. I don't know why but with Nintendo sports they kinda just do the bare minimum. While Pauline would be awesome I don't just see I don't just see it happening therefore I give her a five percent I've been talking about easy modes a lot in this video, and I want to talk about Rosalina next because she's essentially made for easy mode. And Super she was first appeared in Super Mario Galaxy, and I'm pretty sure she was only been playable in Super Mario 3D World. She, I don't, 
she would be the perfect easy mode. She could just hover. She always gets completely overpowered like Peach. So she works perfectly as an easy mode, but I don't think they'll include her in this game just because if they include her as the only new option, I don't think the tagline now featuring Lois and Leon with so many copies. I just don't think she's going to be. So if you add up all the percents right now, we're looking at 95%. And while I'm including, just including one more 5% character, I wanted to get uh, someone creative. So I have five 1% options. Obviously, by the fact that I gave them 1%, please do not think any of this will happen. I don't know how many times I need to discuss this. I literally think Yoshi is like the only actual likely character. Daisy would somehow surprise me. Anything else would like shock me. However, when any of these 1% characters come, I just, I, I wouldn't believe it. I think I was dreaming because these are just too weird and wacky for Nintendo, despite the fact that they're all basic Mario characters. The first 1% character is Wario. I think he can have some sort of shockwave attack when he ground pounds to attack faraway enemies. And multiple people will ground pound at the same time in Super Mario Bros. Wii. Something like that, but for limited ranks when he ground pounds, it's just going to make sense because, you know, Wario's fat. Oh, fun fact about Wario, he was first featured in Super Mario Land 2, which is on the Game Boy. But anyways, the, the next 1% character is Wario and Waluigi. I only included Wario again because I don't think Waluigi would ever happen without Wario. I don't know what special move Waluigi actually would have. I mean, something with a tennis racket, but I think that would be really unlikely because nobody uses an item in their moveset. Maybe he can be Extreme Luigi, just like a super tall jump. Once again, completely unlikely. I didn't think that they would include it because, hey, I mean, it's Waluigi. And Nintendo has seen that height for Waluigi, so I think they'll be like, hey, I mean, if we put Waluigi in this game, it's guaranteed to sell a million billion units, so might as well. The next 1% character is Donkey Kong. Just like Yoshi, Donkey Kong was a Mario stable who wasn't in Mario Bros. Wii. Other like Yoshi, Donkey Kong doesn't appear in Mario platformers at all. Maybe he can be a straight up invisible mode because, I mean, he's Donkey Kong. I don't think our Goomba would be taking him down. But from the Donkey Kong Country series, a big mechanic in that game is Barrel. So if he falls off like a cliff or something, maybe a Barrel can just shoot him back up. That would mean the only way he could die is by getting crushed by something or I don't know, falling into lava like that poisonous purple goop. It would be really good for like an extremely easy mode. The fourth 1% character is Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong. Once again, I don't think we're going to get Diddy Kong without Donkey Kong. Just like I don't think we're going to get Waluigi without Wario. In terms of mechanics, I think Diddy Kong would be one of the best characters to exist he can have his signature peanut gun and his little jetpack thing which would make him function kind of as peach up with a firefall all the time once again that would be an easy mode but it would also be really interesting like having a peach up with a firefly all the time super super unique sort of thing though and I didn't mention this before, but I don't think either of the Kongs would be able to use power-ups. That's okay, they're completely overpowered movesets, like extreme of invisible mode. For the final 1% characters, I have Peach. Yeah, you can play as Peach. Now, why do I think you can play as Peach in this game? That makes no sense. Peach had first appeared in many Mario games, and I'm pretty sure she was only been playable in Super Mario 3D World. She's not really a popular character, and she doesn't have any signature moves, so it doesn't make sense as to why I included her. She would also have to be unlocked after beating the game, because it wouldn't make sense if you could play as Peach while you're also trying to rescue Peach. You might be asking, Carter, why did you even include her? And I honestly have a one-word answer, and I am positive that you cannot guess what this one word is. Everyone, write down your guesses now. It doesn't matter because you're wrong. Oh, one word is Beaver. I'm sure you did not expect that. I'm one of the biggest Super Mario fans of all time, and I didn't use this feature when it existed when Miiverse existed, so I don't want you all to know about it. Essentially, your friends on Miiverse could like upload their time trials to the game, and then their Miis would appear as Spurxies to kind of like Mario time trial ghosts. That's the only reason why I think about it. However, those ghosts did look like Spurxies, so they did have that sort of move, not move stuff, but like the quieter animations, I guess. I don't know, that's the only reason why I threw that in. So to wrap it up, looking at the pie chart, clearly Yoshi is absolutely dominating this race right now. I truly think Yoshi is the character. However, there are some other ones that could be pretty cool. I don't think Daisy would be that good from the gameplay perspective. The double jump is kind of played out with the Rose and Lena, but literally everyone seems to want her, so sure, I guess I'd be happy for you. My fun, the coolest one of these, in my opinion, would be Pauline. I think it would be really neat. I think that's sort of boomerang style range, but that's how they have would be really cool. But yeah, Pauline would be my top choice, but Yoshi is the one that I think is actually going to happen. Let me know down in the comments below, though. Even though I talk about Mario literally all the time, if you got... 
If you guys want to see something else about Mario, let me know down in the comments below. On top of that, if you made it this far, I'm assuming you like the video, so physically pressing the like button helps the video. So, and if you want to help the channel, please hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to hit 100 subscribers. That's not true. I'm trying to hit 1,000 subscribers, so please I'll hit that subscribe button. I mean, I don't know. There's not a lot to say. If you guys want to listen to Autism to my podcast, which is a really cool podcast hosted by yours truly, Brittany Antis, I mean, you can check the link in the description. I'll take it to that specific channel over there. We have clips and follow episodes. It's a blast. Before I sign off, I want to give a big shout out to my good friends. Thomas from Switch Stop. Thomas, if you're watching this, I hope you have a great day. You're doing so well with the Super Mario 35th anniversary video, so just keep up the awesome work. So, so press the like button, leave a comment down below if anything you have to say, and subscribe. But most importantly, thank you guys so, so much for watching, and have a good day. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm Carter Yantos, signing off. Peace.